So uh, when do you think you can come um, back and go back to work? I guess you miss shooting, you miss... Um, actually, what uh, has been your plans during the Corona shutdown? Uh, has you had any films to do or any um, theater work? No, theater work is going on, on virtual reality. I'm working on a piece of theater. That's started. <clears throat> I'm very happy about that, that every other day, uh, every alternate day, I'm working on that uh, with a mentor, with my uh, director and writer. Mm -hmm. um, apart from that, I was about to start shooting for, I would say the most, the, the biggest ever film in my life and the most challenging role that I've ever done in my life. Uh, we, I was in Bangladesh and about to start the shoot and the film, uh, is uh, was produced by two of the producers of uh, Bohemian Bohemian Rhapsody, uh, and the director is the director of uh, Delhi Crime and Siddharth and all that. So, uh, but we had to postpone it. Uh, we I was already there in the country in Bangladesh, and uh, we had to call it off till we start again. And uh, we don't know when that is going to start. But uh, there, there were a few more films. One was in, set in Switzerland, the other was in uh, India and other places in London and everywhere. But th that means also, Adil, that there will be no second season of Daily Crime? Or is there a second Daily season? Crime. No, Daily Crime has been shot. Second season had been shot. Ah, okay. Maybe mm -hmm. a week's work was left. So they must be now in post-production, rapidly finishing up whatever they have shot and get it ready. And one week of work is left, according to my information. Mm. So, yeah, as soon as they open up, they will just shoot not much left, very little. Mm. Nice. And how about Star Trek? That is also um, uh, completed. And uh, is it already also to, uh, can it be watched or is it uh, still in post-production? No. You know, Star Trek is in the post-production. It has been over. We finished the shoot. I'm sure it's a lot of lot of computer graphics, uh, which takes uh, generally a lot of time. But this started in January. Uh, no, when did this start? I was there in, I forgot exactly which month I was there. My part is done. Uh, I have been there twice in two different uh, timings and uh, so yeah it should be ready i mean i just read some newspaper report or website report today they're most probably coming by the end not end but later this year uh, they're going to start telecasting mm -hmm. and how did you feel in uh, working for such a big production uh, and in the american uh, movie system compared to the um Bollywood or Indian movie system, or let's say the art house system, for example, um, well, like a film like Hotel Salvation. <laughs> exactly, I was about to come to that. Because this man who is sitting uh, here, Sanjay Bhutiani, he has trained me so well to fit into any situation. <laughs> so, <laughs> and uh, I'm lucky to have worked uh, with uh, Shubhashish and Sanjay producer and director and I'll be ever grateful to that film what it has given me and it is still giving me and I hear I read your mail uh, Stefan that is going to be coming out uh, as DVD in DVDs by later this month in Germany and um, uh, so I, I feel uh, Stefan I let me philosophize a little bit and allow me that indulgence Sure. Because my job as an actor is to fit into any role. So that is also the case in everyday life. Now I'm playing the role of a home chef and a husband and a father and a gardener and, you know, all sorts of things. And uh, so I take it as if it's a role that I'm playing, that I'm playing a role, the actor's role who is in a big film or a TV series. You know, it's the most expensive series on the planet Earth, they say, mm. ever made. So right. uh, the only difference could be is that the things which are being demanded artistically 
from all departments are fulfilled with no questions asked if it is artistically demanding. Uh, in a smaller film, what happens is that can we make do with something? But that also gives birth to a lot of creativity when we, uh, you know, when we have a smaller budget and in the constraint when we work, it gives birth to a lot of creative solutions. Yeah. And I'm not, I'm not, I'm not saying that the bigger budget film, especially you know, when you're working with the top of the world, you know, class uh, crew, cast and crew, they do not have those solutions. They also have the solutions. And maybe they can go farther with the creativity because of the resources that they have. I'm sure Sanjay is going to agree with me because he has produced a lot of ad films with a huge budget. So you, he understands the availability of resources and what it can give you. So I feel uh, at home and I feel at home in Mukti Bhavan and, is, and in Star Trek. And I am, as I said, I feel one of the luckiest actors on the planet who can do a no budget film to a love budget film to a multi million dollar film. So, you know, no, no complaints whatsoever. Sanjay, how is it uh, for you? Um, um, Adil mentioned that you're involved besides doing such fantastic art house films like Hotel Salvation, you were involved heavily in the art ad business. Um, are you working on ads or films uh, during the shutdown? Um, yeah. If so, how, how are you doing it um, although you can't go out? So uh, there are a couple of things we are, two, three things we are doing right now. We are using this time very productively. Uh, there are uh, three teams right now working on uh, scripts. Uh, including, uh, you know, Shubhashish is working on his next project right now. It's about to, I think by another month or so, he should have finished his script uh, by end of May or early June. Uh, and we have a couple of other directors we are interacting with and uh, finishing those uh, scripts there. So we are trying to use, uh, you know, time, this time productively. Uh, we're like in the process of buying, uh, uh, you know, book rights uh, for a series we want to develop. And uh, like, uh, I've already approached Adil for that. <laughs> I don't think I can work without him many things. So, and he so fits to the T according to me. And uh, he wants to do comedy. So I've given him something which is very serious, but I see comedy in that. So once he reads it, he'll understand what I'm, where I'm coming from. And I've approached him without a director, really, because I, I believe once he says yes, then I think we'll get a good director on board. <laughs> uh, discuss together and get a very good director. Because it's a very, very strong concept. We're also working on something interesting, which should come out in about two, three weeks from now. Um, uh, you know, like an ad film kind of thing. Generally, we do... Uh, you know, high, high value advertising, uh, global campaigns and big budget campaigns we specialize in. Um, so that's what Adil was mentioning because he has seen some of our work that we've done, you know, internationally. But uh, my heart is, uh, I define big, uh, honestly, uh, with idea and not budget. So for me, the idea is the big thing. For me, that is, that is where the excitement is. So yes, we are busy using our time productively to developing few things. Great, great. Um, Adil, um, I have a question uh, because in uh, doing some research for this live talk, um, um, I have seen you in an interview from uh, IFI Festival in Goa um, last December. Premiere screening of Par Pariksha. Is it right spoken? Uh, Pariksha. Can you tell us a little bit about that? Pariksha is a film uh, written, directed by Prakash Jha, who is a very celebrated film director in India. And uh, it is based on a true story, which was told to the director by a police officer, who had been an IPS highest ranking police officer. Uh, the character of that police officer is also in the film. Mm -hmm. uh, and it's about, uh, uh, about a rickshaw puller, cycle rickshaw puller, uh, in a small town in uh, in India, in eastern India, 
uh, who carries these people, young kids, to the best school in town. But his son goes to the government school, which is uh, generally not, you know, well looked after financially and uh, academically as well. So his dream is to make his son study there in the in that big school, but of course financially he cannot afford it. So in the process of the story, we found out that he had gotten some money, and then he had to he managed to put his son in that big school, but he could not afford to sustain. And in order to sustain uh, financially, to support his son uh, son's education in that very 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 high end school what he goes through and his fall from grace is a tragedy uh, it's, a, it's a tragedy uh, and so that film is complete and is made uh, prakash ji was waiting for some collaboration with another studio so that they can release it in a in a larger way uh, or sell it to the uh, satellite so that he gets the money and use that for uh, PNA. We call it uh, PNA is uh, what is PNA? Publicity and uh, advertising. Uh, advertising. Yeah. <laughs> I'm so bad with this the jargon of production. No, I no. can't believe you're not. You're okay. not expected to know everything. <laughs> <laughs> I'm terrible. So um, that's what I have known, and I've seen the film. It's very heart uh, wrenching and heart warming as well uh, to see the film. I have one question here from the audience. Uh, why do you feel avant-garde productions such as the recently made Hollywood in the English game, um, Netflix, so it's a Netflix production, the English game, are not made in the Indian context? When do you feel Indian OTTs, I think he means not just Netflix is not an Indian OTT, I think like Hotstar also, will rise about the cliched production laced with sex and violence. <laughs> I, I know that you're not playing in a movie, in movies like that. Um, I'm just uh, repeating that question. Sanjay, would like to take the question? Well, you know, I think there are there are different players are, are doing different targets. Uh, though most of them, what I understand right now is that they are targeting uh, masses, and uh, some of them have taken the route of uh, sex and violence in a big way. Uh, uh, very evident because people know about it, which is why this question is coming. Uh, there are there have been some good uh, uh, programs uh, uh, that I've seen on uh, Amazon, uh, definitely with more consistency uh, and a couple of uh, good uh, two or three programs which have been very good on Netflix also from the you know, Indian production uh, and like uh, one of them was uh, Delhi Crime uh, and I, I particularly like the first part of uh, Sacred Games, uh, you know, the first season uh, and uh, also I saw Taj Mahal 1989, I like that on Netflix and uh, there are people who like other things as well but these are, these are my personal uh, you know, likings and on uh, Amazon there have been some very good programs too. I believe on MX Player there have been two, three good shows. Uh, so I think uh, they are everybody's experimenting, learning. Uh, you know, uh, trying to figure out uh, how do you connect with a larger audience, which is uh, you know different from uh, which is the same audience as the television audience is watching. Uh, you know, the conventional. Uh, uh, you know programming on uh, Star TV and Sony TV and other channels. Um, so they are trying to reach to them and some people are tickling them with sex and violence and some people are trying to make uh, good content uh, which is different, let's say not good only but different kind of content. So they've been successful as well. I guess uh, our market will evolve over a period of time and we'll see good content coming in. Adil, what do you think? That, that is my question also, Sanjay. If there are others than Netflix and Amazon, so the big global player, um, because in Germany, for example, we have two um, big private stations, so the RTL group and the Pro 771 group, and they started their own OTT services, and they started also to produce originals. And then there's also the second uh, TV channel of Germany, it's a public uh, channel, and they also started to produce series as originals. Uh, they pick the word from Netflix, or everybody is picking that from Netflix, I guess. 
But, uh, so how is the development in, in India? Do you, is, is, there, is there something, is there some movement that the big players like Star or so, they are also uh, stepping into that field, producing original series for their OTT services? Yeah, yeah. So all, all that is happening right now. And I think this is again the time people are using it to, for development. You know, so I, but honestly, when I'm interacting with some directors and writers, Sometimes they throw a blank saying, listen, we are going through a difficult time right now. We don't know how to really think and, you know, write something. Uh, uh, but some people are writing as well, uh, like, like, uh, excited about some ideas. So it's all a mix happening right now. And I'm sure Adil is being uh, uh, like sprayed with a lot of scripts going to him nowadays. Saying Adil is sitting at home. Why not <laughs> attack him with scripts, you know? And like a few other actors who are popular, who people want them. My my take on your quest, the question that you ask is, uh, in uh, again, I'm looking looking at it thematically and not specifically. <clears throat> is that uh, also depending upon the observations that I have across the OTT platforms from uh, abroad and in India, uh, that the themes are mostly about the lower depths of humanity. Most of the, uh, almost 90% of the contents are like that. Uh, crafty, very, very well made, uh, narrative wise, style wise, acting wise, technically extremely well made, but it's like a vulture, it flies very high, very skillful, but the eyes are on the corpses or caracas of you know, the lower depths of humanity. Uh, because I think it is very difficult for any creative person to write something which is about, which, is, which can uplift you, which can give you an insight of a deeper insight into human beings, into society, into, into relationships. Uh, it is extremely hard to write. I mean, the, one of the best examples that I had been part of as such a film uh, was uh, one is uh, Life of Pi and the other is, uh, which was, which became a, a hit, which became a, you know, which uh, is a budget was $110 million, but they made $850 million, uh, you know, almost $700 million profit. The only film which was thought that it is a very expensive art house movie, but it turned out to be a blockbuster. And uh, so, but it's very difficult to make such a film. You need a lot of creativity, a lot of hard work, and a lot of vision, a lot of craft, uh, but it's very difficult to make, uh, but it's very difficult to make a movie which is just a philosophical in nature, at the same time extremely interesting and engaging for common audience to watch. Now, if we are talking about India, even in India, a place like Gohati, you know, Life of Pi ran for five weeks. Some people say, oh, because you were there. Well, I was there in other films also, it never ran for five weeks. But Life of Pi did. It is nothing to do with the actors or, because, and there were no stars in that film. There was the star was only star, if we call it a person who is known was Ang Lee. And rest of them were not stars. You know, Irfan was known a little bit. I am absolutely not known. Suraj was a newcomer. But the film became the star. The theme, the way of way it was made became the star. So I, my take is that uh, very few people in the country, our country, I'm talking about India, would have such kind of perseverance and creative. Of course, they're extremely talented and creative. But to have such a, uh, and, you know, uh, uh, to persevere, to make such a movie which will also engage a lot of people and yet not compromising its philosophical uh, philosophy behind it, the theme behind it, and not giving, uh, they will not uh, cut short in any possible way. Uh, so it's easy to sell dark sides. It tickles, it's... You know, it, it, it tickles the human being very easily, sex, violence, and fear. It is very, very easy to sell. 
uh, I don't understand why uh, 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 when people find an easy way to sell things, why would they why would they take the hard way? The only reason they should take the hard way because for me, art must serve uh, the purpose to lift, to uplift the audience and give a macro view of the humanity. And that's what art should serve, according to my perception of art. Otherwise, those are just movies. Those are not art. Like art, it, can, it cannot reach the level of art. Now, coming to the second example, which is Hotel Salvation, Mukti Bhavan. It has got that quality, according to my understanding. The only thing, only reason that it did not go out into the cinema hall because we don't, didn't have the budget for PNA. If it was, we would have spent at least, you know, 10 crore. I don't know how much is that in uh, euro. If we had that money, you would have packaged it well. We would have advertised it well. I, I think. Once people would have come to the cinema halls, it would have become a hit, according to my understanding. I, I totally then, agree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So uh, it is very difficult to make such a, such movie. No, no, I totally agree. And um, Adil, this is also uh, one more question for you. Um, you have picked those art movies, you know, and they're so. How do you how do you search for that, or how do you um, how do you decide on your roles, on your characters, on the on the movies, on the roles you take? Um, can you give us a little insight in that? Sorry, last sentence. Now, uh, an insight in uh, how you pick uh, the um, the the roles, the the characters you you play. If you get the, I, I guess you get a lot of offers, and then you have to choose. You know, so. And um, what is, let's say I'm a new filmmaker. <laughs> I want to attract you in my movie. So what should I offer you um, besides <laughs> money maybe, but uh, that's uh, obviously not so important for you because um, as I, I'm seeing on your work, what you do is you always seem to look for films which has some meaning, meaningful uh, films, you know. So, um, okay, so what, what, if I'm a new filmmaker, I'm, I'm Shubashish and I don't have a father like Sanjay, uh, what should I <laughs> put in the script uh, to uh, persuade you? <laughs> no, but uh, Sanjay was uh, the person who recommended my name to Shubashish. But apart from that, uh, it is Shubashish's writing mm -hmm. and his personality which got me into the film. Uh, even he had, uh, you know, anybody behind him, uh, but happens to be his father. But that wasn't the reason. The reason was that the script spoke volumes to me. The theme spoke to me deeply and the fact that I knew that he can make films very well because he had the craft with him. He studied it. He had made one film, which I saw. Uh, but before even I saw his films and read his script, I said, yes. So that element, which is, I believe, in intuition, that I had a good feeling about it, and I value my feelings, uh, in, uh, then my uh, strategy and intellect. I value my feelings way more in these cases. Uh, if a new filmmaker uh, can credibly prove that he can make film, because everybody wants to make films, not everybody, but a lot of people. Uh, and then uh, I have done also such films, but quite a, film, quite a few of them turned out to be very, very mediocre. And uh, it's not that the script was bad, script was good. It that they didn't know how to translate that into a film language, in, into a credible, you know, well-defined uh, film. So I nowadays look at, of course, the script, uh, the credibility of the director, what he has done before, even if he has done a short film. Uh, I would like to see how he look at scenes and light and color and costume and interrelationships between the characters, how complex it is, how deep it is. All these things have to, uh, you know, have to be fulfilled. And uh, of course, if the person is, a person cannot pay, uh, the producers cannot pay, then we have to find a way out to, uh, so that they value my time as well. Uh, or the art itself is 
good enough for me to be part of it that I don't regret at all that, oh, why did I spend one month doing Mukti Bhavan? Because mm-hmm. that film is so, one. It, it is not because of anything else, but the kind of love that it received across the globe. And it gave me credibility as an actor. It gave me a national award uh, and also awards across the globe, so many of them. So, but th- those are later. I didn't know it will give me awards, but it's a matter of uh, how uh, deeply it is connected to the writer's heart and how he has spoken the story, told the story through the film language. So those things matter a lot. And I can only choose from the films which chose me in the first place. Like mm. they come to me and then between them I have to choose. So I don't have an agent scouting out uh, scripts for me at all. Except for I have an agent in Hollywood, but not in India. Okay, so you do everything yourself. So all the scripts come in, you, you read yourself. That's a lot. I try my best, yes. Oh. You, next time you need to uh, show us the staples of screenplays. <laughs> You're hiding <laughs> somewhere in your cabin or so. Okay, I have a question from the audience. Uh, this is for the both of you. Adil and Sanjay, could you share your journey through the craft of filmmaking? What have been profound experiences for you both? And it's coming from Kanchan, Kanchan Monga. Sanjay, I'm not a filmmaker, so it is Sanjay. Okay, okay but you're a, film, you're an actor, so what's your, uh, how did you learn your craft? So the, the, the question is for the both of you. So for you, for the craft of acting, and for Sanjay, for the art of uh, filmmaking, producing. Sanjay, go ahead. I, you know, I don't know. I got into the film industry when I was in advertising. I started with, uh, you know, uh, in advertising, I did uh, one film, you know, promotion of a film called Raju Chacha in 1999. And uh, Mr. Ajay Devgan, he told me, why are you not part of the film industry? You guys can think creative. And I started a film marketing outfit uh, within the advertising agency, a first of its kind in India. And uh, it started growing and one day I got a job offer to head a film company called BR Films, BR Chopras, which was an honor for me because I had done the marketing for Bhagwan and that became quite a success uh, as well. And, uh, you know, I never looked back. Uh, I learned the ropes of film uh, trade and creativity during the course of uh, my job there. So I was heading the company. But uh, yeah, that's how I got into it. And... Uh, I worked with some of the biggest uh, stars uh, during my BR Films days. But I've always um, had this uh, thing in my head uh, since, la- since 2008, 2009, that I want to do meaningful cinema. And that's when I quit the job in 2009 and December to start Red Carpet with my partner, Sajida. Uh, and uh, our first production, uh, Kush, which was a short film that did pretty well. You know, won many awards. And then, of course, Mukti Bhavan uh, has been a great, great experience for all of us. Uh, you know, making it together, it's been the most wonderful experience of my life. And I'm hoping that uh, we'll make some... I'm just waiting for my next couple of uh, projects, which I know of. And uh, I'm hoping that we will uh, surprise the audiences again. Adil. Um, well, it had been both intuitive and uh, strategic training. Uh, initially, when I started, I started as a child, as an eight-year-old. I acted for the first time in my life on the stage uh, in a two-actors play, two-actor play. And I loved it. And I thought the time stood still for half an hour, felt like five minutes. And I know that there is some magic there and I continued doing it and then I joined the film industry in uh, in 1980 I did my first film in 1982 as a video film uh, when there was the very rudimentary camera and uh, you know all that um, and then I joined the Assamese film industry from 1985 till 
1990, early 1990. And then I realized that I need to train myself to learn uh, more about acting. So I joined the National School of Drama and uh, then I joined, I, then I went over to England to study at the Drama Studio London. Then I came back <clears throat> realizing I know nothing about acting. So I uh, begged my teacher, Khalid Tayabji, to train me for the next six years from 1993 till 1999, I had been training. So it's nine years from 1990 till 1999, I had been training myself. Then I fell in love with theater instead of film. So I thought I would like to be a hero in Bollywood, in Bombay those days, not Bollywood. And uh, then uh, fortunately I fell in love with theater. So I never wanted to act in films. Uh, in 1999, I did my first play, uh, which got me uh, an award uh, from the Fringe, uh, Fringe in the Edinburgh Film Festival, uh, Theater Festival. In 1999, I got the best review that any Indian actor has ever gotten from the Independent, from Scotsman. Uh, so uh, I kept doing theater till 2009. Uh, I did two or three films in between, but very small films. 2009, I acted in my first. Uh, so I don't want to go for a, bio, a biography of filmography, but the process of learning was uh, a continuous process then. Um, <laughs> in fact, a week and a half ago, I started working on this text that I spoke of, uh, the theater piece that I started working on. And the, the, the process and the approach that we started following, and I realized, oh my God, uh, this is going back to zero. And I had to admit to my uh, director, mentor, I'm saying, it feels like I know nothing about acting. He said, yes. <laughs> he didn't say yes about me. He said yes about himself because he also followed this process and he realized that he knows nothing about acting. So now we are collaborating from zero and I hope that this knowing nothing about acting in spite of doing so much will continue to be like that and so that I can start from zero every time because that's what keeps me on my toes and uh, and makes me look forward to the next thing I do. Here's a question from Manasuya Paul. Um, my question is to Adil. It seems there were many young men, also women in Assam, who wanted to get into a national school of drama like you. Baharul Islam, Seema Biswas. Uh, why and how did it happen? How did they get into drama school? Is that the question? I, I don't understand the question totally, to be honest, but uh, <laughs> maybe I'm not. What did he write? Yeah. Uh, let me see. Um, okay, I, I just tried to bring in Anusuya. Um, Anusuya? Okay, so she has, doesn't have a microphone. Okay. Hello? Yeah, yeah. yeah. Can you hear me? Yeah, I, uh, hi Adil, uh, I was just very curious to know because I work with Baharul, actually I did my uh, PhD in uh, mobile theaters of Assam. So I was just uh, working with Baharul also and uh, I was curious to know how many young men and uh, also women, but I don't know many about many women, but I know about uh, Seema Vishwas, who had uh, got into National School of Drama at one point of time. I wanted to know the socio-cultural um, uh, context under which these young men actually were overwhelmed with the National School of Drama and they got it at that point of time. What was the basic reason? Was there any unique reason behind it that they got into? Because Assam always has a very different history when it comes to, uh, when we talk about the nationality question, the kind of a conflict that Assam has with mainland India. I don't want to make it into a very political thing now here in this talk, but I just wanted to know how you got into NSD, how people like Baharul Islam got into NSD. Uh, okay, thank you. Yeah. Got, got the question. Yeah. Anusha, I think it is a matter of 
how intensely you want to better yourself. Uh, not you, but I'm sorry, talking about uh, acting. I didn't even know that a national school drama existed because uh, I grew up in a town where newspaper used to come three days after it was published. So uh, I had no idea that that could be one such school in the world and that too in India we have where people are trained to, you know, trained to act, which was like, I was like, I fell from heaven and I was like, wow. So um, I think the intensity of your search and uh, how intensely you seek to learn, uh, excuse me, I mean, <laughs> our 10 year old, he has come out of his den. Uh, how intensely you want to learn and you are seeking to to dive deep into what you love in terms of, in my case, it was acting. And someone told me and I applied for it and so did Sima Vishwas and Baharun Islam. Everyone uh, who had gone to drama school, because it's very tough competition. There are only 20. Nowadays, there are 26 seats, but it used to be 20 in our days. Uh, all over India, you know, thousands of applications are, uh, you know, uh, um, uh, applications are there every year. And only 20 students are taken. So I cannot find any other reason uh, apart from the fact that you have sought intensely to go and you have prepared yourself well and you have uh, fulfill the demands and the, and the, and the requirements of the fundamental requirements uh, to be uh, to be in the school of drama school and uh, then I have a next question this is from Seol Islam um, also for Adil how do you feel perceive death is it just the end or life or an energy leaving its physical form or is it more than that um, there's a lot more written here, but I think that's uh, the basic question about it. I, I didn't get it. I didn't understand. Okay. What did How you do you see? perceive death? Um, um, is it just the end? So it's uh, for Hotel Sal Salvation, this question, you know, for, um, because Hotel Salvation is dealing with that question. Is it just the end or life or an energy leaving its physical form? Or is it more than that? People often find it difficult to reconcile the death of a closed one with an occurrence which is in a, um, in a bit table. Okay. Okay, you got it. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. Circle of life. Wow. Yeah, Ziaul, uh, Ziaul Islam is from a very lovely little town called uh, Horbog in Assam. And I personally know him and he does ask these difficult questions. He has a habit of doing it. <laughs> So, um, it's about death he was talking about? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Okay. Um, well, I don't know. I haven't died. So, uh, you know, it is very difficult to say it from the personal experience. But whatever I have read and what made sense to me, what rung true to me from the great masters of India, uh, you know, the, the great masters which were born in India, Sri Aurobindo, Sri uh, Ramana Maharshi and all these great masters, what they have spoken about and also from uh, uh, Buddhism, that I believe that uh, energy can be, cannot be killed. It can be only transformed. It transforms. It, it doesn't, it, you cannot destroy it. So the energy which is now, uh, which is now in this body and keeping me alive, and if I die for some reason right now, and Adil will cease to be, and Adil's body will remain for some time, and then I will be buried or cremated. So uh, whatever leaves the body, I would say that is part of the energy, and that would transform into some other thing and some other dimension. And I deeply believe in that, uh, that it does not, it's not the end of the story. It is just the end of the episode, and the next season will come. Okay, so will be um, Sanjay. Will there be like um, part two? 
Sanjay, we don't have audio. Now we have your audio. Yeah. Sorry, you were asking me something? Okay, or? so my question was if there will be a part two. Actually, if you'd like to bring in Shubhashish, uh, this is a good time. Oh, well, <laughs> he's, 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 he's busy with somebody now. Oh, okay, okay. okay. So, he's, so he's, will there be a second part? He's with his, he's with his grandmother having dinner. Oh, okay, okay. Yeah. So yeah. the question again is, will there be a second part of the Hotel Salvation? <laughs> <laughs> the hero will change in that. <laughs> <laughs> I'll cut my hair short. <laughs> I'll charge so much to train you, Sanjay. You have no idea. You'll make a film. <laughs> <laughs> so... Uh, Stefan, uh, I think um, the story what Shubhi wanted to say, Shubhashish wanted to say, I think he's, he's told with all his heart and uh, whatever skill he had. Um, and uh, now he's working on something really, uh, another very interesting thing. So we are hoping and, you know, with fingers crossed and with all humility, I must say that uh, you know, the audience decides what, uh, you know, uh, on, uh, you know, the liking of the film, if it connects with them. But we are hoping that uh, we, you know, uh, make the audience happy again with some uh, good stuff that uh, is under development, uh, especially from him. Okay, when can, can we expect to get more information about the next work? Um, I think <laughs> once you already tell us at least the theme or something. I don't know, you see, make it the, more more secret. No, it's not secret <laughs> actually. I I have to uh, read the next draft uh, of the script next month, and um, I'm very excited about what I have seen in the first stage. And uh, the thing is that everything has a process, and because of this lockdown, uh, things have got pushed. So, uh, maybe in the next six months, we'll know exactly where we are going. Okay, uh, I wanted to bring in Jyoti because she has a question. Uh, okay, Jyoti, you, you had a question also. Jyoti, you can speak now, um, but if you don't speak, we don't hear you. Ah, Jyoti is a guy. Jyoti is a guy, yeah. <laughs> Yeah. Hello? Uh, hello, sir. He's a big fan of Adil Hussain. Hello, sir. Yes. Hello. Uh, yeah, hope can... uh, all... uh, can you hear me, sir? Yes. I can hear you. Yes, I can hear you. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I had a question. Like, you know, uh, we always have that, you know, uh, that soft emotional connect with our mother uh, rather than our father. Uh, yeah. For everyone, our mother, our father seems to be a bit strict for us, for every son. So, what do you think the Mukti Bhuvan could have turned out to be if it would have been a, you know, uh, a mother-son story? So, what would, uh, so what emotional, what emotional journey would have you have gone through? And oh, I wish I, I, I knew. Yeah, I got it. I got the question. Uh, Jyoti, thank you for asking that. But I wish I knew. I have no idea. Uh, but if I can just quickly imagine, which is very difficult for me, but I'm just sort of entertaining myself uh, with the idea of if the relationship between was, it was between the father and uh, mother and uh, son. Um, the drama it would have created would have been from a different space because father and son, uh, not every father and son are in a difficult relationship, but most of the time, that's what I've seen because I don't know whether it is going to be, uh, whether it would be right to say, but I think there is a male male uh, kind of a competition. Um, it is not 
logical it is not planned but there is uh, <coughs> this there is a sense of no don't <laughs> There is a sense of another male coming into the life of uh, in the family, you know, where the father and uh, wife, uh, the mother and father are having a relationship, you know, going through and suddenly there's a male member coming into it, uh, secretly possibly challenging the attention that the father is to get from his wife. I don't know. I'm just making it up. Uh, it is an alpha male situation, uh, I guess, uh, and 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 so the difficulties that the may you know father son faces uh, face is of a very unique nature. Uh, I was wondering if I had a daughter, would I had similar relationship? I think I wouldn't have gone out of the house at all, you know, uh, leaving a, a daughter behind. Um, so. I think Freud would be able to answer that question much better than me or a sociologist, but that's my feeling. I feel that there is a sense of uh, in, not insecurity. It's very uh, difficult to uh, point the finger at, but I wouldn't know what could be possibly the equation in Mukti Bhavan if it would have been a, it would have been the mother and the son, but it would have been different. Maybe it would be more subtle. Maybe it would be more nuanced, the, the relationship. And there, there are differences. I have seen uh, mother, son having terrible times in India. Forget about in another country, in India. The terrible times uh, I have seen myself, I you know, in my, from my own experience. So it could be very, very interesting. I mean, that could be the part two. Sanjay, that's your take, your turn. Not me. My director has to decide. <laughs> okay. And if I know him, you a bit, producer, you can you can convince him to add right mother Adil, son instead of Adil. Adil, I know his little thing. Whatever little I know of him, I don't even claim I know him. So whatever I know of him, I know he would never repeat himself. <laughs> he never repeat himself. <laughs> Now, how can you even think like that about me? You know, I'll do it different, something completely different. So, yeah. Yeah, that's, that's always a good choice. I think we should come uh, um, slowly, slowly to the end. So, if there are any questions yeah. from the audience left, please uh, ask now. Uh, you can also raise your hand. I can switch you in, but that will be really the last question. And... Um, but uh, Adil, I have w one question uh, which came up here from Anjana. I s also, greetings from Anjana Singh. You uh, may remember 2017. Anjana Singh did the framework program um, uh, yeah. with her Amical um, Society. And um, so she's asking when you come back to Germany. And I have also a question related to Germany. But uh, first, um, are there any, any plans to come here? Not so far, I guess. Um, I mean, I would love to visit Germany as a part of my holidays, but uh, it's so difficult to find that little time unless work takes me there. Um, uh, I would love to. Uh, I had enjoyed, we performed Othello, the play that I did up in Bonn. Um, so, and Berlin is one of my most favorite cities in the world. I spent days and days inside the museums. When I drove from Amsterdam to Denmark to Berlin, uh, I spent around a week inside the museums, all the museums. Uh, so I, I haven't finished it yet because I was standing in front of one painting for like the whole day. <laughs> so I was taken aback. Uh, was it Night Watchmen? Uh, I forgot which one was that. So yes, I would love to come back to Germany, and uh, yeah, I've got got a few friends there as well. Yeah, I see. So um, there are a lot of museums left. There will be also some new museums. There will be Humboldt Museum. This is a total new building yeah. in the center. And um, uh, Sanjay, so we have to look for a co-production, Indo-German co-production, where Absolutely. we can in. 
So uh, absolutely, I'm I'm so so excited about uh, making a film uh, with a German uh, co-production. Uh, the the good thing is that we made so many amazing friends in the film fraternity in you know Germany. So uh, you guys and Thomas and uh, you know Karsten and you know, and there there are so many people and you know uh, in the, the München Film Festival where we were also. Uh, there's so many, so many friends, uh, you know, I can't even remember all the names, but uh, yeah, I'd love to uh, bring a movie with, you know, co-production with Germany and maybe France or Germany and, you know, uh, Denmark, Netherlands or Germany and Sweden, something that I'd love to explore in the very near future, as soon as, you know, these things open up. Okay, great. I think that um, very good. Um, I have a question. Yeah, to, sure. I have a question for Stefan. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Um, could you give us some details about how they plan to shoot or already shooting in Germany? As uh, you have sorry. said, do you have any information on that? Uh, sorry, I didn't get it because I was uh, looking for the last question here from the audience. Uh, please say it again. Sorry. My, my question is that since you said in the beginning that people are I mean, the film industry has started working uh, minimally, but do you know what are the strategy that or the rules that they had to follow so that we get some ideas also? Yeah, sure, sure, sure. Um, actually, there is a, a couple of pages, uh, you know, um, which I think you may translate with Google Translator or whatever they are in German. But the simplest one is, for example, uh, one shoot I know of, um, they started already, I think, 10 days ago. There's a TV series called, um, what is the name of the TV series? Uh, anyway, um, they do it just, uh, you know, um, they have a very close set. Uh, they do all the tests um, all these uh, staff team members, they uh, wear the mask. Uh, I don't have the mask now here, I don't know if you see it. Um, I just, um, no, I left it somewhere. Okay, they wear the mask and um, uh, the actors, they just shoot, you know, um, from, from the two sides, you know, uh, shot and, I don't know in English, shot and the other shot. So what is shot and opposite shot? You know, I think yeah, yeah. Shot and opposite yeah. shot. You know? so, um, so that they can separate uh, the, the actors as much as possible, as much as they can. You know? And um, they already started, uh, Hubert and Staller, this is the name of the TV series. It's uh, in the first um, TV program. It's a crime comedy. Okay. Mm -hmm. but and, did, you, uh, yeah? did you read the latest that Tom Cruise is going to shoot in the space? The first film to be shot in space is Tom Cruise is going there. What? <laughs> yes. Yes, the whole yes film uh, I heard it. That that's Tom Cruise for you. That's crazy, isn't it? Yes, uh, NASA has approved it. Okay, I don't know what, what voice is that uh, they're coming from. That is Jyoti Prakash is still there, I guess. Uh, maybe, yeah. Um, there's a last question here what, uh, 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 from Alexis Michel, and I like to close with that one. Adil, namaste. Happy to hear you speaking passionately about cinema. What has your film shot on Majuli Island in 2018 become? Yes, uh, the question is that what is the film or what happened to the film? I guess so. I can uh, watch if I have an Alex. You think the film that you've shot in 2018 in Majuli Island, uh, what has become of it? Like what's okay. happening? Okay. Um, I don't know actually. Uh, it went to, it opened in the Busan Film Festival and uh, it went to a few more festivals. Uh, it got very good reviews. It's a horror thriller kind of a film. It's a, you know, paranormal thriller. Uh, we shot around 10% or 15% in Assam in Majuli and rest of it was shot in a uh, hill station in uh, Manali. You're talking about Nirvana. Uh, You're talking about Nirvana. Sorry? Right? You're talking about Nirvana. 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 In, yeah. Yes. And uh, so I guess we're waiting for someone to buy it. Uh, the mm -hmm. producers are finding to sell the film to the OTT platforms. Okay. 
Yeah. I want to see that film. Okay, so thank you so much. Thank you, Adil. Thank you, Sanjay. So keep safe. Um, stay healthy. Um, all the best.